Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you know uh, what is hosting in JavaScript? Uh, yeah. So, uh, like uh, any uh, very uh, any variable we declare uh, and any functions are there, it will declare on the top of the file uh, to uh, and uh, JavaScript uses it for later on. Like if we have uh, created where a equals to something uh, later in the code, it will uh, host it on the top of the script uh, while uh, when the script runs. Okay. What is closure in JavaScript? Uh, closure is like uh, uh, if you want to uh, create um, like a function uh, calling itself and uh, inside uh, what we can write is like different uh, variable to initialize uh, different counters. We can use closures and uh, it will um, have its own state and we can refer it inside a function. So which we can say it is a function inside a function and it has itself uh, like its own state of uh, variable that we can maintain over it. Okay. So uh, can you tell me on real time where uh, real time where closure closures are used? Ah, uh, uh, we can use like on incrementing a particular like number of visitors that are visiting our uh, website. So that we can uh, for that we can use closures. So what will happen is like every time a new uh, user uh, comes, it will increment a particular uh, counter value. And uh, if a new user is coming, it will again increment uh, that particular value. So we can see number of visitors visiting the websites. Uh, this we can implement using closures. Okay. What is higher order? What are higher order functions? Higher order functions are like which are built on top of the functions. So map, filter, reduce. Uh, we can say these are higher order functions, and which returns an array uh, or like a. It is not important, like it, it is returning an array, but uh, my filter and reduce are uh, some kind of higher order function which uh, transforms the data of an array into uh, a transform. Will be, it will be transforming the data and will get uh, uh, the original uh, content is not being transformed. Uh, it will uh, uh, apply some uh, operations on that and give a new result set. Okay. Uh, so Oh, what is the advantage of arrow function above, above normal function? Uh, arrow function uh, uh, uses this uh, of the window. Apart from that, uh, um, like it is not uh, scoped uh, like where uh, normally function are uh, there in the memory, but these are defined as a variable. Uh, so arrow function will be defined as a variable and until, until, uh, until and unless initialized, it won't be there in the memory. Okay. What is a promise? A uh, promises are uh, what we can say like it will return a result set in future like and uh, uh, there will be uh, something which will be returned either fulfilled or rejected but not currently but in some time or in future we can say. Okay. Yeah and basically uh, this are uh, utilized uh, to fetch the data from the API. Uh, so in modern JS, we use this as uh, getting the data from the API using fetch or XCOs. So uh, it uh, usually returns a promise and we can resolve it and uh, get the data accordingly. How many ways you can create an object in JavaScript? Uh, object we can create uh, like while declaring a, a const object equals to two curly braces. This is one of the methods. And then uh, there is one constructor new object we can use to create an object. So how many ways you told? Two ways? Two ways, yeah. So one is Colibrace, another one is? Uh, one is like uh, creating using constructor. Other one is directly declaring equals to uh, curly braces. Two curly braces uh, will define an object. Okay. Uh, how, like what is the memorization? Memorization is like uh, we can store uh, a particular value and uh, mm, uh, while uh, again uh, fetching or doing that operation, if the value is stored, it will return from the memorized value. Otherwise, it will uh, again operate and give the operation store that again in the value and then it will be written. So why it is needed? Uh, memorization is needed like uh, uh, so. Uh, so you can tell not me. yeah what is the advantage of memorization you can tell me 
yeah advantage is like uh, not to compute the operation again and again if we have the uh, data already it will be will return that otherwise what we will do we will store the data in a result set and uh, then return the value and again if someone is asking for it we will return from the uh, memorized value okay okay so let's have yeah. some react questions so what is the sure. use of uh, key in a react list a uh, key are used to uh, differentiate uh, like uh, um, the uh, so when we are uh, mapping over a particular elements so key will providing a different id to each element to differentiate uh, uh, like uh, the rendering and uh, uh, once it is done uh, when if we are adding something new the key is new so only that particular part is rendered if not uh, every time we are uh, giving a new key so uh, whole thing will uh, is going to render or if we are not having a key whole thing is going to render but if we are having key so only the new key added will be going to render in our uh, div okay what happen like in a list uh, so if we pass all the key same value it will not render it will render but it will compute again and again so uh, suppose there are 10 objects so 10 times uh, it will run and compute Uh, if uh, we are not if we are adding a unique keys so only once uh, like new elements are added uh, if you are adding a new element in that list so only once uh, that rendering will happen for a new element but if uh, not we are not using keys properly so whole 10 elements are going to be rendered okay can yes. you tell me different types of uh, react hooks you have used uh i have worked with uh, use effect uh, use memo uh, use callback and apart from that uh, so mostly i have worked with this use state okay so how can you implement uh, uh, react uh, life cycle methods using uh, react my cycle methods in react function and using react functional components uh we can use use effect so what we have in use effect is like a dependency array at the end like use effect will be having a dependency array so if it is blank only once uh, it will run use effect only once uh, if we pass a certain dependency into this so it will run every time that particular dependency changes and we can uh, unmount a particular code a particular piece of so we can write a cleanup function so at the uh, so where whatever function we are writing at the end we can uh, write a cleanup function and in that we can specify the code to uh, like uh, destroy the component we want to uh, destroy the devs we want so that we can do okay how do you optimize large list in react oh uh, we can uh, use virtualization uh, for this so uh, those uh, list which are getting uh, rendered uh, only uh, like suppose 10 elements are there only 10 uh, uh part uh, like 10 objects are going to render apart from that when user uh, scrolls so new um, api uh, request will be go and uh, it will fetch the new data so that is called pagination yeah okay now uh, we can use virtualization uh, which is uh, based on like uh, we don't have to uh, call api again and again but uh, data will be rendered uh, 10 per uh, 10 for each so in use effect we write certain code so you are telling me means if i am to have to show 100 elements uh, present in uh, for a one product or one search so at a time i'll call all the 100 elements in api and keep it in ui you are telling you told you not call api again and again ah uh, no uh, i am telling like if we have 100 elements in our react code and that also we need to render on the ui uh, in a efficient way only 10 we are going to render so that we can do using virtualization i am not sure about the code uh, what we are going to write but uh, virtual virtualization uh, we can use here i need to look into the code like how it works okay. but uh, yeah how do you use react query for data fetching uh react query i am not worked with at uh, much Okay. Yeah, we have worked on uh, like uh, Azure uh, Axios uh, to get the data, and uh, uh, apart from that, for the global management, uh, we have used Redux. Okay. So, what is the uh, uh, like? You can tell like uh, how do you connect Redux to a React component? Ah, uh, we can use uh, so there will be a store 
and that store will be wrapping whole application. So we'll be writing a context over it and uh, like Redux store, we will pass that store and uh, then we can write our own slices and uh, we can use uh, uh, those particular uh, slices in our component using uh, use selector. And we can write our own dispatch action methods to like uh, update the value in the Redux store. Okay. So uh, have you used React Suspense? Yes. Can you tell me why you do used? Yeah. So what we do is like, uh, suppose we have a very big bundle. So to uh, break that bundle into uh, bundle into small chunks, what we will do only data we are rendering that particular part will be fetched. Uh, and uh, it, uh, our bundle will be divided into small chunks and it will be on demand basis. So whatever component we are asking for, uh, that particular chunk will be rendered. So this we can achieve by uh, using suspense. Okay. Yeah. How do you uh, do DOM manipulation in React? Uh, DOM manipulation we can uh, uh, do by using set state. So what we will be doing is like we are going to dispatch action and uh, uh, using the use state hook and uh, the set part in that particular hook and that is used to uh, manipulate the DOM in the React. So every time that changes, uh, our components get re-rendered and our menu DOM gets manipulated. Okay. So, uh, 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 how do you handle uh, errors in JavaScript? Uh, we can use try catch and uh, wrap our uh, functions or API calls inside that. And uh, we can catch the exceptions and uh, accordingly we can execute the code that we want to. So suppose we want to log it or uh, throw as an error, error, we can do that. Okay. We will ask you to implement a drag and drop feature. So how will you implement? Uh, drag and drop, uh, I did not got the opportunity to work with drag and drop as of now, uh, but I guess we get the offsets uh, X and Y uh, for that. Okay. And uh, we, whenever we are uh, dragging that particular div, uh, we will get the X value and Y value for that across the page and uh, we can set it like whatever the last position of our cursor is, we can set it there and uh, and we can update in, uh, it in the state and now next time you uh, we, when we are going to um, uh, come uh, that particular uh, state uh, can be fetched and uh, we can see our div there okay how can you create a custom react hook to debounce a function uh, we can write a custom function uh, using, uh, so what we can do is like, uh, uh, we can uh, use set, uh, time, uh, set timeout uh, and set timeout of uh, suppose of, uh, I guess, uh, 400, uh, 300 milliseconds or 500 milliseconds. So what will happen uh, if uh, a user continuously typing? So our API, uh, this can be beneficial if uh, like we are uh, making an API call on change. So what will happen if continuously user is typing, uh, our use case will be uh, every time user will type, a new API call is going to happen. So to prevent that, we can uh, write a debounce function. So for suppose a delay of uh, 300 or 500 microseconds that we can do. And uh, in set, in, uh, set timeout, we can give that particular API call and uh, every time user clicks, uh, it got resets and every time and, and if there is a difference of 300 milliseconds, then the API call is going to be there. Apart from that, if not, then uh, it will reset. Okay. On typing. How do you use uh, uh, React with Webhook and Babel? Can you repeat? How do you use React with Webhook? Oh, sorry, Webpack. Webpack. Yeah. Yeah. So Webpack is a type of a bundler that we can use uh, to uh, bundle our application. And uh, Babel is uh, something that was used to transpile the JSX code into JavaScript, JSX or TSX code into TypeScript. So that we can combine and use. And there are um, uh, 
uh, webpack uses uh, I, i guess the uh, create react app uses webpack and nowadays uh, there are new bundlers like white or parcel that we can use okay so how you create a react project so which way you prefer to create uh, have you used uh, byte yeah currently we are working with byte okay so what uh, is it uh, yeah 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 tell me uh, but we can uh, also uh, configure our own uh, react app like uh, we can um use uh, webpack so there are few commands that install the webpack uh, in our application and uh, then we have webpack config file inside that we define uh, like uh, our uh, scripts or same for white also uh, in white config dot ts file we can define our uh, parameters to use react and babel uh, presets that we can configure and we can create our own uh, uh, react app uh, using that so sub, uh, like we are not using anything uh, that is already there we are creating uh, everything from scratch okay so can you uh, explain the box model and its component mm -hmm. i'm not sure about like can you repeat the question box, box model, model and... box model i uh, know i'm not in css uh... in css like flexbox uh, i know and grid i know but uh, box model i am not sure okay 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 fine uh so what are the different type of css selectors uh we have ids classes and uh, that particular element suppose if p or dev or uh, h1 that we can directly use to select otherwise we have classes uh, and uh, ids okay can you tell me what are the some of the techniques to optimize css performance ah uh, so oh, we have some um, css preloaders like uh, less or sass that we can use and in that we can uh, define our variables and that variables we can use in entire our uh, like if we can declare it on the global level and that we can use um, in our other css file okay yeah apart from that uh, there are selectors uh, i recalled that there are pseudo selectors also uh, on hover event or uh, what we can say uh, on blur or blur event we can uh, focus event that we can also use for selecting okay